Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop. Um, you know, there's an old saying that says life's too short for turning crappy wood, and I agree with that. If, if, if the wood is crappy, I don't like to fix things either. I don't, you know, if, if I've got a bad piece I've turned, I generally scrap it. Bad crack or something of that nature. But I, I got an order from a nephew of mine for three um, baby, baby rattles. Now, Turns out I have three of them on hand, but one of them I turned several years ago. Let me see if, see if y'all can see the, the difference. This, this one is okay. This one, the handle is just way, way too thick through here. And, and, and I hate to throw it away. You know, I think I can fix it. So let's see how about how I go about dealing with that challenge of chucking this thing to fix it. It looks to me like that thing, I can chuck it in my normal 50 millimeter jaws. All I've got to do is wrap the end with some some painter's tape. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the fattest end. That's this one. Just wrap it, just to kind of protect it a little bit. And I'm not going to tighten it too tight. Okay, I think that's going to take care of that end. Now for the other end, I'm going to make a soft touch that's hollow to fit this to go on my Nova Live Center. So I've drilled a hole. I've uh, put a little scrap of bar into this little short stubby uh, taper and I'm going to thread it on here. So I'm going to use my Nova Live Center. So I've used this little short uh, Morse taper. I'll show you how that works. I've got a video, couple of videos out on the soft touch, but basically this feature uses a 5 16th, 5 16th, 5 16th inch threaded rod. Well. So I cut a little short length based on the tip I got from one of one of you viewers that, that said instead of using bolts, get you a piece of coarse rod and it's cheaper. Okay, so I've drilled drilled a scrap of uh, an old wooden block I had out of pine, and I'm just going to put this on, snug it up. turning. Okay, I figure I need to take this down about a quarter of an inch or so, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and, I'll, and so I've measured this with, with calipers and we're going to just mark that on here. Again, just touching this end. And I hit that one just about right. So, taking a, a spindle gouge, I'm just going to Recess that a little bit, get the speed up a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about that square spinning around, that's not gonna bother me. Might help if I lock down my banjo. Now I drill a hole all the way, just about all the way through it so I can see if I'm going to accidentally hit the edge of that threaded rod. Which would not be a good thing. And this doesn't have to hold it too snug, it just has to support it. Let's see how close I am. Matter of fact, that's looking that's looking pretty close. It's rocking a little bit, so I just need to come down a little bit on that on that inside. And I think I think I'm going to get after that with a little bit of a round nose scraper. That's the easiest way to I think get it round. I'm gonna get one a little smaller than this. It better match. It better matches that contour. I've got one just a little bit smaller and that'll work better. Alright, let's see how that does. Okay, I like I like that fit good. Alright, so we're gonna take this stubby taper out like that. Put that in the Nova Live 
live center. So that simply fits in there, that Morse taper. Now put it in the tail stock. Put on my chuck with a 50 millimeter jaws. And I'm hoping this thing will seat in here enough where this won't dig onto the edge. And I'm just going to snug it up just enough to hold it. You know, the heavy work has been done on this. All I've really got to do is just take this down a little bit. Okay. And I'm just showing you that there's, there's lots of ways to, to solve problems, which is one of the things that, to me, that makes wood turning kind of fun. Now, he's going to dance around a little bit. That's okay. And this is going to be a little bit disconcerting, but as long as I've got this short tool rest in there, so I can get close enough to support it, and hope this doesn't bang on it too much. Nope, it'll miss it. All right, so now I'm going to to use a uh, half an inch spindle gouge and just take it down. Whoa! Caught my finger on that thing. Maybe a square wasn't a good idea. I should take time to round it off. This is a one-off. That's almost there. I think I'll come down just a bit more. Try to smooth this cut out a little bit. Okay. And I'm done. All I gotta do is uh, uh, sand it. Okay, all that's left is buffing it up a little bit. I don't like to use any finish on these since they're going in a baby's mouth. And frankly, there's no finish that's going to withstand uh, very much teething of, uh, or, or sucking and licking by a baby. So you might as well just polish it up and let it go, go at that because no matter what the finish is, it's not going to be pretty after a while of, of use. Okay, I'm not sure you can tell which one was uh, had, had the fatter one to begin with, so that's looking good. I'll go ahead and put these in, in the mail uh, tomorrow. Um, <laughs> you know, people ask me sometimes, do I... Do I sell my uh, do I sell my work? And it's like, well, not really. I don't like doing craft shows, but occasionally somebody will buy something. Well, I've got one nephew that gives these things away to all his friends that have uh, babies for baby showers, and he is my best customer. He buys he buys these things periodically. And says, hey, I need another baby right on Uncle Mike, and I'll put it in the mail to him. Uh, so there we are. Y'all come back here. <laughs>